Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan, and Alex is not here at the moment. This was one of those weeks where we just could not get together and record an episode. He is very busy, I am very busy, and we just could not make it work. Between all of the things that he's doing, and so the streaming, and obviously his job, and then, of course, my job, dealing with the aftermath of that whole storm that came through my house, uh, and uh, <laughs> for everything else that I've been working on, like the, the podcasts, so it just didn't happen this week. And so I thought that I would just do something uh, quick and easy, or at least that was my plan, uh, to do another kind of developer development episode, a dev dev thing. And so I started thinking, like, you know, maybe I'll do a little bit of research. I'm going to look at some, you know, basic game development or really development in general elements. And it got me to looking at actual elements of game design. And I thought that that was very interesting. You know, a lot of people have thoughts on that matter. So I, th I thought maybe I could go over, you know, some of the basic elements of game design. You know, just a, just a bare bones, basic idea of what game design has. And, uh, and that would be very useful. So here's the problem. Uh, depending on who you talk to, the elements of that game design are very different. And I thought it might be useful to tell you about some of what I found when I started researching it. So one of the first things that pops up when you start looking at the elements of game design are the four essential elements. And the four essential elements are players, actions, payoffs, and information, often referred to as POPI. That's right. P-A-P-I. This is the acronym that they are going for. Now, what's interesting is that if you actually look at how this is prioritized from start to finish, that's actually not how it runs. It's actually players, the actions and information available to the players, and then payoff is at the end. But I guess P-A-I-P doesn't really work very well. Maybe you could switch it around and it would be P-A-P. But I, I, I really feel like they're just trying to make that acronym work. Now, why are those four important? Well, obviously, those are very basic concepts, right? You know, obviously, you have to be thinking about the players as a part of the game. You have to think about actions that our players are taken. You have to think about the information that is available to the players, and then eventually the payoffs for doing things in the game. Now, that makes all perfect sense as essential elements. And if that was the end of it, that would be great. You know, you could just say, okay, well, those are the four essential elements of game design. Good. Moving on with the rest of my life. However, it's not, because as you go down into the rabbit hole, you realize that other people had other ideas of what those elements might be. Now, if you were to go to GameStar, which was actually an online game, this is something I just found out about, by the way, an online game and a community that was designed to teach guiding principles of game design and systems thinking, they actually define it a little bit differently. Let me see if I could pull that up to tell you what it is. In that system, they teach people that there are five elements of game design. Now, granted, this is more for video games, but I, I still think that the general principles apply for tabletop. The five essential elements that they list for game design are mechanics, space, goals, rules, and components. Okay, now we're into the real physicality of this whole thing, right? You know, the actual mechanics of what you're doing in the game, the actual space that the game is taking place in, goals that your players are going through, the rules in order to figure out how you're going to do those goals, and eventually the components that are there so that you can achieve all of your goals in the space with the rules and the mechanics that were given. Okay, now that also works for tabletop gaming too. It might be a little bit more esoteric because you might not be looking specifically at the individual components, but it's still very much there. Okay, so now we have one system over here that is the poppy system that tells me that I need to think about players and actions and information and payoff. This is kind of like beginning to end what a game actually needs to do. Then I have the game star way of looking at things where it's all about the individual elements 
that are really leading up to it. Although they don't really mention the payoff parts, like the actual like front to back of the whole thing. These are just the elements that you need to put into place for a game to essentially work. So these are two very interesting thought processes. But it gets even trickier now, because, oh wait, there are more people involved! For you see, I also ran across an interesting article about the four elements of game design. See, we're back to four. That was written by uh, Darren Jameson from Scotland, who's an indie developer. And he's talking, again, mostly about video games, but I feel like his points are well taken for any kind of game. And his four basic principles of game design are challenge, choice, change, and chance. Or as I like to think of it, C4. Is that fun? His points are pretty straightforward. You know, a game has to have some amount of challenge involved. Even from the simplest games, he mentions like throwing rocks at things. Probably don't do that. But, uh, or the tag your it uh, running games. Uh, that these are, even in the most simple of forms, a certain kind of challenge that you are given. In some ways, this relates back to some of the other things that people were talking about, right? Like goals. Challenges are sort of like the goals that were mentioned before. Then you have choice. And choice is very important for games. If you didn't have choices in games, you really aren't playing a game. And so, actually, that kind of links back to the other things that we've talked about already, about space and rules and components. Well, what are those for? Well, to make choices in a game. When we're talking about the actions and information available to players that was in the Big Poppy system, or whatever they're calling it, uh, that is also reminiscent of that. These are all, you know, functions that give you a choice as a player in that game. Then change. And I thought that this was actually one of the most interesting points that he made in the article, which is, if you have a game that does not have any change, the player is going to become bored very quickly. And so that's the thing, is that just like you have to have a challenge at the beginning, uh, your challenge can't just be the same thing over and over and over and over again. You have to eventually change that landscape. Now, the example that he gives is actually, think about Mario. Okay, if you go to the original Super Mario Brothers and you look at World 1-1, are you going to play World 1-1 over and over and over again? Well, unless you're a speedrunner and you want to figure out how to do it in three seconds, then no, you're not going to do that. What you're going to do is want to see what's in World 1-2, 1-3, 1-4, and they're going to be different. And there's going to be new elements and new enemies that are part of that. That all kind of leads back to one of the other things that we were talking about with components. Well, the components have to grow and change as the game progresses forward. You might think I'm just talking about video games here, but this is not the case. This also happens for tabletop gaming. If you look at almost every RPG, there are going to be some basic things that you can get into to understand how the game works. And then there are going to be deeper mechanics that you might not really even know about, but that you start to experience and then get better at utilizing in the game. Moreover, if you are running a game, you don't want to give your players the same challenge over and over and over again. Your characters are leveling up. You're getting more powerful. If you're not changing while you're doing that, if the game world isn't changing, if new challenges are not coming up, then it's going to feel very flat or basically like. It doesn't matter what you're doing in the game, which also goes back to the idea of choice. If you are given choices, but there is no change to the game world when you make those choices, then why do you have those choices in the first place? And then the fourth element is, is chance. And I thought that that was interesting, because there is actually a fair amount of chance, depending on what game you're looking at, unless you're talking about, like, chess. Practically every game is going to have a measure of chance. In fact, if you're looking at RPGs, the chance usually comes in the form of dice. Because they are a variable. Point that he makes in this particular article is that a game without chance is simply a puzzle. And while puzzles are fun, and sometimes puzzles are elements of a game, they are usually not the entire game. Also, and this was a good point that I'm really glad he made, when it's solved, it is no longer providing any kind of entertainment. You can really only do the puzzle the once. But with chance, it actually allows change and challenge to happen organically in a way that otherwise you, you just wouldn't get. 
this can apply to any kind of board game as well. If you think about uh, Carcassonne is a good example that I'll give you right now. It's, it's a tile laying game, but you don't know what tiles you're going to be picking up. And so every time you play the game, it's going to look different because your chance of getting the specific tile that you were looking for is not a guarantee. So what the board actually looks like at the end is always going to change, even though the same elements are there the entire time. So what did I actually learn about when I went to do this thing thinking, hey, maybe I could talk about elements in a game? Well, I guess what I learned is that depending on who you ask, those elements are very, very different. I did not think that it would be quite so different. Uh, and obviously this has a lot to do with who wants to prioritize what and when, but I guess it's worth looking at multiple definitions of essential elements. It's worth looking at what different people prioritize. And uh, I was very interested, just as I started to look into all of this, what these essential elements are and for whom and in what context, because it seemed so disparate at first but I feel like in some ways, everyone's saying the same basic things. They're just using different terminology or looking at it from a different perspective. I did like that last list, though, about those four elements. One, because they all start with CH, which is pretty great. Uh, but then the other one, because those seem pretty straightforward. Like, you could apply those all to almost any kind of game design. They're a little bit open-ended, so you can utilize them however you see fit. But yeah, challenge, choice, change, chance, I like that. I do, however, like uh, Poppy, just because I always think about Big Poppy when I see that. I don't think it has literally any, except Big Poppy does play a game. He is a player in a game. And I suppose if you wanted to look at it in that way, that's baseball. And I suppose in, even in baseball, you have players, actions, information, and payoff. So yeah. For Poppy, the Poppy system makes perfect sense, if nowhere else. That was me just relaying what I learned in a few brief moments when I said, hey, I'll look at basic game design elements for an episode. And I don't know if I got more confused by the end or not, but I found it fascinating to find just e even the first few examples uh, be so disparately different. Are there four elements? Are there five elements? Are there a hundred elements? I don't know. Please, if you have some ideas on basic game design elements, please tell me. I'd be very interested to know. It's the kind of thing that I might like to uh, talk about more on a live episode with the community. So if you have thoughts, please let us know ahead of time. And when we do the October live episode, I think we might uh, spend a little bit of time talking about those basic elements. If you want to find out anything more about Delve, please go to delvecast.com. Everything that we release is over there. You can also find us on the Twitter. Yes, we do indeed use that occasionally. I am at Citanium, Alex is at EXP Limited, and the show is at Delve Podcast. You can also find us on Facebook. We actually have a group on Facebook. Just look for Delvecast. You're going to find it. And uh, again, if you go to the website, make sure to try our Patreon. Uh, it is a wonderful resource. If you really like the content that we're creating, uh, going over there and just becoming a very basic level patron will get you access to a whole bunch of things, including some stuff that we don't even release on the regular channel, maybe because it was a little saucy, maybe because it was off topic, uh, but also a lot of early releases of things, uh, stuff that I happen to have prepared early, and I figured I would just release it when I had it available. Things like a Citanium Mine, which actually comes out early over there. Uh, but then also some videos and even Delve episodes that will be uncut and out early because I haven't had to edit them yet. <laughs> so there's that. Thank you to our shiny level patrons, Bonnie Ainsworth and Nick, and also to Drunk Paul, who helps keep the lights on over on our Discord server. Feel free to join us on our Discord server and join in the conversation. We always like having you around. Uh, whether you are an experienced game designer or a new one, we like to hear from you. All right, so that will do it for this episode of Delve, and uh, we'll see if Alex and I can get together for the next episode, because I do actually have topics that are starting to back up on me, and we need to talk about some stuff. I'm looking forward to it just like you are. But probably more so. Uh, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.